Looking forward to hearing the choir. And, and uh, I got this young lady. She's going to come and do the announcements for me because I, I usually slaughter them. So, so here she comes. You come right out. Here you go, baby. Thank you for your help. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, we have a card today by Miss Jenny Combs. She says, what a great blessing this church is to me for all you do. God bless. Thank you so much. And. Check out the fellowship hall. There are more items to be given away by uh, Ryan Cleanup Crew. These items will be in the fellowship hall until July 14th. At that time, anything remaining will be thrown away. Um, to anyone who wishes or needs to mail or needs to mail your ties or just wants to make any donations, uh, please look in your bulletin. There we go. Uh, and the address for Betty Johnson is on there. So, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. She's got a much better voice than I do, don't you? Amen. But nevertheless, I'd like, like for you also to be remembering Miss Shirley Crump. Uh, she's in pain continuously. So be, be praying for her. Good to see you, Debbie. And uh, please be, be, be praying for her. And uh, Miss Kathy will get her telephone number and her address into the bulletin for next week. And if you'd like to just drop a card to her, I, I'll assure you that would bless her heart. So, so that's, that's continue to pray for her and pray for others. I know there's several sick, any physical conditions. Let's raise our hand up and let's pray for them, okay? I, I got to go to the doctor Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then they scrape it again Wednesday. So that's real exciting whenever that happens. But nevertheless, there's no infection, so I'm doing the right thing. Miss George has helped me by telling me what I need to do also, and I, I appreciate y'all's prayers and everything that you do for me. So at this time, though, if you know people that maybe has never received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I'm not asking for their names. Let's raise our hand up to the Lord on their behalf. I tell you what, we need to really be, I've got such a burden on my heart for people that has never called on Jesus. And I've also got a burden on my heart for people who, they, they never bear the fruit of knowing Christ. I mean, it's like they have no joy, they have no peace, and, and uh we need to pray for them and encourage them along life's way and try to get them to Christ. And, and uh, so let, as I go to the Lord in prayer, you join me today. And let's pray for them that are physically sick. But let's pray for them that are spiritually sick and the lost, okay? Let's, let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now as humbly as I know how. And Father, I want to thank you that I'm getting better physically and I pray for others that's getting better physically and I pray for all them that, that's not. I mean, that they're just so sick. And, and, and we pray for Ursula's brother. Lord, we lift him up to you. God, we pray for Miss Jeannie Combs. I just ask you to touch her in a mighty way. And there's many others in here. And Jerry, Lord, we pray for him. And Father God, the, our prayer list is very lengthy. And Lord, I read it every day, try to look over it and, and, and call these names out. And Father, we ask you to touch them that is so physically hurting or Seek. Father, we pray for them emotionally too, Lord. These people that's just up again it and, and they're just depressed, they're just low. And Father God, we just lift them up to you and ask you to touch them. And Father God, I do pray for them that's lost. I ask you to help me, Lord, to always keep my eyes open, to reach out to them and to tell them about the Lord. And Father, I know that lost people live like lost people because they don't know you. So, Father God, I'm praying, believing by the Spirit of God and the power of God that, as we learned this morning, that raised Jesus Christ, that we can get those folks that's dead in their sins and trespasses, get them to you, Lord, that they might be saved. And, Father, please, please just hide me behind the cross today. Bless Ryan. Bless all them that's had a birthday, anniversary. Touch that in a mighty way. And, Father, bless the offering. And Lord, touch that in a mighty way too. And I thank you for an opportunity to give back. I thank you for an opportunity to share the gospel again today. And Lord, I love you. Thank you for lo loving us. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen, amen. In case y'all don't know it, and I believe you know it, but there's an offering bucket back there. If you got an offering, go to the church, just throw it in that bucket. Amen. Brother Ryan, you keep on getting the feeling better, okay? Any birthdays this past week? Birthdays? No birthdays. Any wedding anniversaries? No wedding anniversaries.
the hymn book on page 396 at the bottom. 396 at the bottom. 396 at the bottom. Jesus, and thank him for saving my soul. Amen. Write my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. No man can't take it out. I don't care who tries. You might stumble, you might fall, but you will always, your name is there. He don't, he don't judge you every little thing. He loves us, and he wants us to do right. And you all just pray for me. John tells of a city that he saw coming down where no sorrow or death will be known that someday we could go there who is my 
it's hard to bear and old satan he tries to dim my view i just look up to jesus he is standing close by and once again his great light shines
But I want you to know whenever you called on Jesus Christ and you believed in Him that He died on the cross for you and you accepted that blood, you are saved to the day of your death. Signed, sealed, and delivered. God's plan, Jesus Christ purchased it and I want you to know the Holy Spirit preserves it to the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter number 1 verses 1 through 14 is your text for all that. But nevertheless, as we go on into this, I want you to think about this if you will. Tell the message today. The rich man and Lazarus. Way of introduction. We see two men. One is self-indulgent and the other, the man of faith. The man of faith died and was, was carried by angels to the father of Abraham. And the other died and was buried. Both died. The man of faith is in great shape. The other in hell. Now you need to think about this. When you see poor people, you need to think about this when you see lame people. You need to be thinking about what you've been saved out of. You need to be thinking about what your purpose is that we've been going over in Sunday school. You need to be thinking about what God has did for you. And he'll do for somebody else. He'll do for that very vilest sinner that you know. He'll save their soul if you will just present the gospel to them and live your life in such a way that they want what you got. Amen. Oh, if you found your place in God's Word and you're able to stand up, please their eyes to, and honor God's Word. If you are not able, God totally understands. He knows your heart. We're going to look at verse number 19 and verse number 31. And the Bible reads just like this. There was a certain rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Verse number 31. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets... Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Just please hide me behind the cross. Help me to read my notes if that's what you'd have me to do. Father, help me just to preach it flat-footed if that's what you'd have me to do. But Father God, mainly keep me in your text. Keep me in your word. Help me to present it in such a way that people will go back out these doors and realize they need to tell the folks about the Lord Jesus Christ because you don't know who's a going and who ain't. And I tell you, we order, it ought to be distinguished in our lifestyle and how we live our life. So Father God, please hide me behind the cross. Please let people hear it on Facebook, uh, YouTube, parking lot, and in this sanctuary. Help them to hear what thus saith the Lord and keep Raymond out of it. And Father, any comments I do make, Lord, help them to point them to you. And I ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. But as we look at this and we think about this in verse, verse number uh, 19 through 21, I want you to think about this before I read it. Two men, but different in life. Number one, the rich man is nameless, unknown by God. Let us look at our text. And the Bible says in verse number 19, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in pearl and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, let's think about this for just, just, just one moment as we, as we think about him not being named. Why is the rich man, why does God, this is not a parable, this is the truth, this is a true story. Why does the Lord Jesus Christ not use the rich man's name? Because he'll never be seen again by all that's saved. Ever. God's respectful to him, is he not? Jesus is respectful even to them that go to hell. I want you to understand something. He did not go to hell because he's a homosexual. He did not go to hell because he was an alcoholic. He did not go to hell because he, he uh, uh, hated people. He went to hell because he didn't believe in the only begotten Son of God. He went to hell because he didn't follow Father Abraham's belief in the promise that was going to come. And that promise is Jesus Christ. That's why he went to hell. And that's why anybody underneath the sound of my voice or on this planet will go to hell. is because they have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. And you need to remember that. So what are we to present as, as Christians? We are to present, present Jesus at every cause. But notice he didn't miss his name. Why? Well, he said, Raymond, uh, that, that God didn't know him. God didn't know him. 
I want you to understand something. You, you, people say all the time, and I talked to this to some of my brothers yesterday, but they say all the time, how does God look at America and not do this? How does God do this? Listen to me. Since Jesus Christ died and rose again, judgment starts in the house of God, God's children. God looks at God's children, and he's given God's children a plan. And they are to do that plan, and they are to do it because they love God, and they thank God that they are saved. Because these people that are lost, he cannot look upon sin. He can only look at Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed for his children. Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for every local church, every born-again believer that walks the face of the planet, that they would get along with, in their purpose and do what they're called out to do. That's what he's interceding. We are to intercede for the lost and we are to reach the lost. If America and the world is the way it is, whose fault is it? It's not God's fault. It's the church's fault. We've been given the power. We've been given the word of God. There's no error in that Bible. There's no error whatsoever. You've been given a job. You've been saved. You've got jobs out there. You work. You are to tell people about the Lord and everything that you do to the best of your ability so they don't die and go to hell. Now that's exactly how it lays. He, he wasn't known of God. But think about this with you too. Number two, the rich man was wealthy and Lazarus was poor. Now what has that got to do with it? We saw that in our text there. The rich man was, was wealthy and Lazarus was poor. And, and look with me here, if you will. He said, said he was laid at his gate. He was laid at the rich man's gate every single day. Now, this tells me that he had probably a big fine mansion. He had big fine gates and all kinds of stuff. And he was probably loved by the world, and he is probably a good moral man, but he wasn't a godly man. Listen to me. You, you can pay for a trip for all the youngins you want to to go, go to Hawaii and play ball or, or, or eat cotton candy. It don't make no difference. But if you don't tell them about Jesus on the way, they may die lost and undone in their sin and go to hell with a full belly. Now, that's the truth. That's what we're here for. Raymond, you're crazy. Thank you very much. I'll be worse in the morning probably. But I want you to know something. That's why you're saved. That's why you are born again. It's to make a difference around here. And that man had all that wealth so he could make a difference in, on God's earth. It's God's. But he had all that wealth. And there they laid him out there to remind him every single day. Think about that if you will. Uh, number, number three, if, if you will. Uh, uh, the rich man w w was, uh, was healthy. Lazarus was, was uh, uh, disabled. Lazarus was full of sores, unable to work, and, and no family to help or would help him. And there's a lot of people in that shape. They got family, but they don't, they're probably lost. They don't know to help them. Do you realize this is your family's place to take care of the rest of the family? If you're saved, it's your place. It's the church's place to take care of the world, not welfare. Brother Raymond, why? If a man won't work, man don't eat. If he's unable to work, we're to take care of him. Amen. But if they're able to work, we're to put them to work. They ain't supposed to be sitting around drawing stuff because they can. we got a great nation. It's got a good benefit. But the thing about it is people's crooked and lazy and sorry and won't do it. Why are they that way? They don't know God. That's why they need to know Jesus Christ. Listen to me today. Now, it, it's, it just lays out. Just keep listening. And, and, and th think about this. Lazarus was full of sores, and, and it says the dog licked him. The rich man was able to make money and had a, a responsibility to Lazarus. Why? Why did, why did the rich man have a responsibility? Why does the church, why does people that's born again have a responsibility? Well, let, let me just share this with you. Verse number, uh, uh, with, with verse number 19, uh, I want you to think, think about this, if you will, in, in uh, 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 John uh, 10, 14. I got a little bit too excited. Let me come down just a minute. John uh, 10 14. I got just a little bit ahead of myself. 10, 10 14 and the Bible reads just like it. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and, and am known of mine. You listen to me. If you know Jesus Christ, he knows you. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he knows you and you know him. And whenever you start to do wrong, you hear that sweet small voice say, whoa little Raymond, don't you go down that path. That's you, Raymond. That ain't me. Don't you go down that path. You reach in your pocket and you help them people. And you tell them about me. I'm not saying you ought to just throw your money out. I'm saying you ought to give them taters. You ought to give them something good to eat, not just the crumbs. You ought to help them get them up on their feet and tell them about the good Lord. And then if they reject it, they go to hell on their own. You ain't pushing them in. 
You're being what you ought to be. And the church is, it, it ought to be on fire, on fire for God and not, not back at backsliding and, and, and acting the way they are in a lot of places. 1 Corinthians uh, 13, uh, uh, 12, if you want to know. I just want you to know I ain't blowing smoke. It's right here. Uh, 13, verse number 12. For now we see through a glass darkly. Let me tell you something. It, it, you see through a glass doctrine. I do too. But may I submit to you, listen, listen to what he said, but then face to face. Later on you will see Jesus face to face. Well, Brother Raymond, how can I know Jesus more and more? Read your Bible. Take a pencil in hand. Take a piece of paper. Write some of them verses down. Put them in your pocket. You might need them that day. Hey, listen, acknowledge him in all your ways. Listen to what he has to say. As you go by the seashore, tell your children who made the ocean. Tell your children who made the tree. Tell your children while you're there and how they got here and who they ought to know as their Savior as you go through this life. Keep that in mind. And it goes on to say, Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. You will be known how you are known. And I want to ask you something. How are you known? Are you known for somebody that tells people about the Lord? Are you known for somebody that's faithful and right to come to church and listen and see who needs help and see what you need to do for the glory of God and try your best to get people to Christ? Are you known for that? That's how you'll be known there if you're saved. And if you're unsaved, you'll be in the same hell the rich man is, is because of your unbelief in Jesus Christ. Now, now in Galatians 4, 8, and 9, and, and, and I, I get out of it. How be it then? When ye knew not God, ye did ser service unto them which by nature are no gods. Whenever I didn't know Jesus Christ, I served everything but God. But now listen again, verse number 9. But now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. Notice what he says. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements were to ye desire again to be in bondage. How does anyone, once they've tasted that the Lord Jesus Christ is good, and this book right here tells them how they ought to live their life, how in the world, how in the world can they turn away from Christ that died for them and rose again and paid for their sin? I'll tell you how. Romans chapter number 7, we're still here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you're not listening to the Word of God out of your say, and you're not hearing it, and you're not putting it in a shoe leather, may I submit to you, you will backslide. You done already are backsliding, and you need to come back. Come back to work. Come back to where he found you, where he bought you, where he paid for you. You realize you're lost. You realize you're undone. And you realize you're going to go to hell. And to realize that these other people going to go to hell unless you learn about Jesus and get up there and tell them about the good Lord and what he's done. You don't have to be a fanatic. Hey, uh, it might cost you a cheeseburger every now and then. It might cost you a glass of tea. It might cost you a little bit. But it's okay because whatever you give, it'll come back. Amen. You just throw it out there for Jesus. It'll come back. What that love, grace, and mercy and power. Think about these things as you go through your life. And, and we also see something else here. In Proverbs, uh, 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 the rich man was, was able to make all this money. But now think about this with me, if you will. In Proverbs uh, chapter number 14, uh, 20, I wrote these down because I, I didn't want to miss them. 1917 in Proverbs. He that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. They're put there because of the Lord. He said, the poor ye shall have with you always. Why? So the church would know that we are to try to help them. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's spiritual needs. Yes, but they might be poor. They might need us to help them. They might need us to put them in that house down there. They might need us to pay a bill for them. They might need us to do a little something. But we'd better be telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And once they get right with God, bless God, God will take care of them because they're his children. But that word says, pity on the man poor leadeth unto the Lord that which he hath given will he pay him again. In other words, there's absolutely no way this local church could outgive what God will put back in as long as we stay about the Father's business. And I believe with all my heart, I'm preaching to the choir. Amen? Because you do that. You're willing to help anybody, but you're willing to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ as you help them. Praise be to God. And, 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 and I want you to know something. 
He loves us, but we cannot let it down. I see other churches letting the ball down. They got more of an organ, organization than they have a or, living organism. In other words, they got a plan they're going to go by and they wouldn't change. We're going to sing three songs and we're going to do this. No, no, Brother Ryan watches that. Watch why. So, so I can get up here and preach because God chose the foolish of preaching to save them which is all and he chose singing to praise the Lord to get the hearts ready to hear it. Amen. And also, you, a lot of people ask to go to the bathroom. You're still in the flesh. Amen. I, I am going to read one more. Proverbs 21, verse 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. Don't you want to be heard? You can be. Proverbs 28, 27. He that giveth unto to the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many curses. In other words, you got to deal with it. God has saved you out to deal with this world. God had that man there blessed with, with, with financial shape to help that poor beggar at his doorstep. They didn't have a government like we got. They had the people that were supposed to help them. And, and I, I dare say he'd probably give them the, the crumbs. And I dare say that if they had any kind of club that he'd get recognition and they had a way to take a picture or draw his picture, they had him on every window in that club. Had his name on it. Everything he'd probably bought and everything. He's probably famous. Yeah, he's probably real famous. Don't you know a lot of famous people, but if their name ain't on it, they, they ain't going to get nothing. Don't you know that God knows what you do? But may I submit to you, he didn't acknowledge him. Why? He couldn't honor him. Why? He had all God's money, right? And he used it for himself. We notice another word here, uh, if you will, and, it, and it's, and it's uh, I can't pronounce it hardly. Verse number, look with me back, verse 19. Sumptuously every day. That word uh, sumptuously, it means that uh, nice and everything good. Everything. He had it, as a lot of even people who are Christians would say he had it made. I'd say he was the pitiless man on the planet because he was headed to hell. Right? Well, now, we learn a little bit more. Now, I'll do this from the, from the, if you will, verse number 22. Look with me and think about this, if you will. They both die. You and I are going to die. And however you is, is how you are when you die. Keep this in mind, please. Dead. They both die, but, but look at the difference. Lazarus is escorted to paradise, and the rich man died and was buried. Lazarus was carried into the place where all true source of wealth is, where all who have trusted God are the parasites of God himself. Look with me now in our text. Look what Jesus says. And it came to pass. We see the two situations, and I believe I've elaborated on the two persons. But I want you to look at here. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. That's whenever they had a, a death in Hades, had a, a divider. Why, Brother Raymond? Hell was made for the devil and his angels. One third of the angels, trillions of angels, followed the devil in sin, if you will, and disbelief. And it was going to be higher than the most high God. And God made a hell for them. He did not make a hell for the rich man, me, you, and nobody else. People go to hell because they don't know who Jesus really is. People go to hell because they didn't know Abraham and the promise to come. The promise was Jesus Christ. If you research it out, it produced Jesus every single time. They didn't know. Why didn't they know? The children of Israel didn't tell them that. They just told them all the laws and everything thou shalt not do, but they didn't tell them about the finer point, such as love and grace and forgiveness and caring. They didn't teach that. A lot of churches don't teach that either. It's my pew. If that's your pew, that's unbolt that thing. You take it home and sit on it. Amen. We'll get something in here everybody sit on. Hallelujah. 
Let's look again here. He, he said, and was carried by the angel. Look at part two of, of verse 22. And the rich man also died and was buried. No angels come and escorted him anywhere. Raymond, they didn't. That's awful blunt. They didn't know the God of Abraham. He didn't know the God of Abraham. And he sure didn't do what he's supposed to, but it ain't about what he did. He didn't believe. He went to hell because of his unbelief. If Lazarus hadn't believed, he wouldn't have went to heaven either. But may I submit to you, Lazarus had a hard time in this earth. Lazarus was, was pitiful, if you will. Even his, whole fa his own family probably wouldn't help him. You know, you, you've seen people like that. Why in the world don't they, don't they help that old lady? Why in the world don't they help that old man? I don't know. I don't know. Unless they're just lost or either never read the Bible. I have a responsibility to my family to take care of them. I have a responsibility to my uncle as his nephew to take care of him. He didn't have kids. I have a responsibility to see to it that he took care of them. We have a big time. We got our own routine. We just roll. People don't know what they're missing. It's called life. Life eternal. They're missing it. They're missing what they need to go through here. Amen? But I'll go on. Verse number 20, 23, stake with me. The rich man still exists and is tormented. Look with me. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Now you keep in mind, here he is. He had everything he wanted, all he wanted to drink and whatever he wanted to drink, all he wanted to eat, all the party, everything he wanted. He had it. Now he ain't. He's got fire. He's got brimstone. And he's tormented. Brother Raymond, that's awful. Yes, it is. That's why I'm up here sweating and crying and pleading and begging for almost 18 years, August the 2nd. We need to be about the Father's business. We need to tell people about the Lord. We must be born again. We must be saved. David Jeremiah said in a message I heard the other day, he said he'd been there, I think, 40 years. And he said, y'all been a captive all this, and I've preached all I can. But he said, I wonder how many's wrote it in the tables of their heart that they don't sin against God. You think about that. I won't answer for that part. David Jeremiah won't answer for that part. But we will answer if we don't read this part. Now look with me again in verse number 24 and think about this for just, just, just a minute. The rich man, he, he, he is praying now. Look at his cry. And it says, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, he can see him. He can see him over there in paradise. Think about that. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus. He knows who Lazarus is. You'll be known as you're known. As I read a while ago, you will be known as you're known. He sees Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. wonder how many times that old tongue wagged and ever is here on earth. Ah, they come again laying that old beggar out there if he gives a, a servant go out there and give him some crumbs. Maybe he'll crawl all summer. That tongue's on fire now. That tongue's on fire. Let me tell you something. You're sitting in here underneath the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your tongue will be on fire someday too. And it won't let up and there ain't no hope there. There ain't no light there. There ain't no God there. You listening? Part of hell is separation from God. You ain't, ne nobody underneath the sound of my voice has ever been separated from God yet. But if you die without Jesus, you will be. May I submit to you, if it was not for God and His angels and His Spirit and His mercy and His grace, we'd be in a heap of trouble right now. We wouldn't be sitting in here with air conditioning and some knucklehead up here telling us what the Bible said. I guarantee you that. Be screaming for one drop of water. One drop of water. Look with me now. Verse number 25. His cry is denied. But Abraham said, Son, remember? that thou in thy lifetime, a whole lifetime, receiveth the good, thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is 
comforted, and thou art tormented. Lazarus ain't laid at no gate no more trusting man to take care of him. <laughs> Lazarus is where he longed to be. He's in paradise waiting on the Son of God to die on the cross, the promise to die, and to come down with the death, uh, the keys of death, hell in the grave, and set him free and take him to the third heaven to ever be with God because God knows Lazarus because Lazarus acknowledged God and believed in the promise. Raymond, that sounds so simple. There it lays. It is. But you got to believe. you got to set out and believe it got to believe it. And he says there in, in them torments, torments, he's in a torment. Verse, verse number 26, this, this, this is why he is denied. This is why he's denied. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great guff fig, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can thy, they pass to us that would come from thin. You can't. It's too late. You can't come out of hell and go to heaven. You can't come from heaven and go down to hell and get anybody out either. Raymond, you talk like there's a whole other dimension. They is. We're in this dimension right now. We're in the grace dispensation is what we're in right now. And I want you to know that God's grace is sufficient to save anybody that will call on him for salvation. And I want you to know his power is endless. And he can keep them no matter how they backslide or whatever. But you'll be surprised what you live through. He'll give you an awful whooping because you're his now. You're his child now. And he straightened you out in a heartbeat, right, man. But I want you to know something. You can go to heaven. But if you're lost and you've never called on Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you'll never, never, ever be able to come from there to there. There's no way. And I can't go help you. I can help you here, but I can't save you. I can help telling you the truth, the truth of God's Word that'll make men and women free. I can tell you that all day. And, and, and the more I practice, the better I'll get at it. But it's up to you to take it and realize it's for you, right, man, and put it in your life outside them door. It's up to you. I can't make you do that. If I could, I would, but I can't. But listen to me. This is why it wasn't heard. And look at verses 27 through 28. Rich man is praying again, second time, for his brothers. Look with me now in verse number 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Oh, just... If I can't get out of here, this is terrible. And, and, and I don't believe it was like that. I mean, it was, oh, tell them, tell them. Send Lazarus to Father's house. Oh, they don't want to come here. The screams, if you could hear them out of hand, could you imagine? Look again now in verse number 28. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Let Lazarus go back and tell them what he did, that he believed the promise. Let him go back. Oh, oh, let him go back and tell my brother, they're going to come here. They're just like me. I try to outdo them with all the money and all the gambling, and they try to outdo me. They're just like me. They never believed in the promise. They didn't have time. Satan kept us too busy. get too busy for your britches. You can even get too busy in church work, if you will. You need to be busy about the Father's business. Think about this. Think about it. Look with me now in verse number 29. They have the same opportunity as we do. Look at verse 29. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. This is before the New Testament. When this happened, it was just the Old Testament. So they had the law of Moses and they had the prophets. Well, Brother Raymond, what does the law say? It says you, you just can't keep it. You've got to have a sacrifice. 
Well, what does that teach us now? It teaches us that God sent us one that was sufficient. His only begotten Son. And He died for me and He died for you and all mankind, even them you don't like so much. He died for them also. And if they would just hear the gospel, receive the gospel into their heart, He would show them their purpose in life and they get to go to heaven. All right, what about the prophets? The prophets prophesied of the Messiah coming. You remember? Isaiah said he'd be born uh, 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 of a virgin. Remember Malachi, he'd be born in Bethlehem. All those things are true, are they not? All those things are fulfilled now. We have the New Testament, and we have one that is risen from the dead. His name is Jesus Christ, and he's at the right hand of the Father. But yet, yet, some don't believe. I mean, you can run your legs to the bone, you can talk on that telephone, you can visit everybody on ten buck two and tell them the gospel, and some of them just won't listen. Brother Raymond, why do you think time out from the text? Why do you think that's true? It's because them that say, oh, Lord, Lord, a lot of times are too judgmental, too hard on them, mean, vicious, hateful, and they sit on a church pew every single Sunday religiously. It don't bother them one bit. They bless out a little younger. See it right here. Little younger, hold his hand up, some older gentleman. Hold his hand up. And that older gentleman went, You're kidding me. No, I ain't kidding you. I seen it with my own eyes. But that gentleman called me later and said he was sorry. And I said, Have you ever told God you're sorry? Yes, I have. Praise be to God. He got right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But how sad. How sad. In a place where everybody's welcome. A little fella hold his hand up. You listen to me. Them people's there to show you how not to be. Don't let them run you off. I can't be everywhere to cover for them. I was at least there. I grabbed the little fella up and hooked him. Told him I loved him. Glad he was here. He had candy all over my shoulder. Had all over his face. <laughs> I smelled sweet when I went on all I know. Amen. I'd rather have the candy and the kid listen to me preach about Jesus and how to get out of hell. Than no candy, no kid. You think about that. You think about that. How are they going to learn? I think that's the problem today. A lot of people ain't learning, right? How are they going to learn unless they're here? But let me get back with the, with, the, with the text here. The rich man is still praying. Look, look at here in verse number 30. He says, And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He's saying, if you send Lazarus back to their gate, they'll repent. Unless they hear with their ear and inside their heart that God has made a way for whosoever to go to heaven, they won't hear. Right? Why, why do you think, Preacher Raymond, always, whenever it's it's uh, Sunday morning and whenever we have night service and Wednesday night service, why do you think Preacher Raymond wants us to sing a song and wants us to preach before a business meeting or any type of conflict or any type of thing we meet with? Why do you think, Preacher Raymond? Because the Bible tells us that. You people don't need to come in here and us arguing about what color the carpet's going to be in the new church. That's stupid anyhow. Just put some damn wire down put some more down. Amen. Hallelujah. That ain't what it's about. What it's about is souls. And you got to get them in, and you need to sing to them and praise his name, sit down, and somebody needs to open the book and read the book because that's what God chose. And they don't need to skip skip it. They need to tell the truth. Tell it with tears in their eyes because that's where I could be if it was not for the grace of God. Any of us, we need to say amen on that one. We could have been straight to hell if it was not for Christ. But he says, if one rose from the dead, now look at what Father Abraham said. If they, if they, listen to this, if they don't hear the word and respond to it, they won't be persuaded. You have to hear the word. Look at verse number 31. And he said unto him, 
if they hear not Moses and the prophets, in other words, if they don't hear how Moses pinned down the law that God said, how Moses lived, if they don't hear that, if they don't hear how Elijah stood up there on Mount Carmel and called far out of heaven and all them others was slaughtered because their God was dead. He never showed up. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's running around. Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. One has risen from the dead. His name is Jesus Christ. Christ meaning the anointing of God. Jesus meaning Joshua, meaning Savior. He's the Savior of the world. There is no other way that anybody underneath the sound of my voice, including myself, will ever go to heaven unless they call on Jesus Christ their personal Savior. Let, let me share something. I, I don't think he'd mind. He's here today. But my little wife witnessed to him all through high school from the cafeteria. She'd tell him about Jesus. One time his daddy called me to his house and said, Would you would you witness to my son? I said, I already have been. I've been riding in the truck with him. I, I, I tell him about Jesus. Have the best time. Love that boy, Dad. Down there at his girlfriend's house one night, I seen that old boy get plumbed down on his knees. I was a crying, he's a crying, and he said, I just can't. And I said, don't never forget what I told you today. I love you, and I prayed for him. Life went on. You think I'm going to tell you something bad, don't you? Uh-uh. <laughs> Poor little old Debbie was having them treatments, and it was one of her worstest days. And he called and said, can you come by? And I said, I don't know. And Debbie heard his voice, and she said, oh, go by. We went by, that young one come running out through there. he give his heart to Jesus. He just wanted to be sure he'd done it right. And I said, there ain't but one way. You just give your heart to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what he got saved from? Hell, damnation. He got saved out of something. He didn't do something. Now we got to learn. Just like all of us, right? We got to learn, apply it, and have our trials and our troubles and all those things. And you will if you try but ain't it good to know that you know that you know and that you can teach your kids as you go the only thing that will be eternal? Amen. That don't mean you stop playing ball or anything like that. I'd never tell you to do that. But I will tell you that this is important. This is the most important thing in anybody's life. Why? Because it's we're talking about eternal life. If that rich man, and he did today, he cried out from hell, a real person crying from hell, send Lazarus. Even if one rose from the dead, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets. Today, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, and they don't hear the Son of God from the cross say, Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. My goodness. Hanging on a cross. Separated from his father for the first time. Because remember what I said. He didn't know Lazarus. The father didn't know Lazarus. Because he can't look on sin. If he turned his back on Jesus, his only begotten son, because he became sin for us. You remember. If you're here and you're lost, you are not walking in God's favor. Jesus Christ is the one that died for you on that cross. He, he, he's bleeding for the lost right now, right this minute. He's bleeding for you. And if you'll call on him, bam, you'll go to the resurrection. He's living for you now. He's rose. Amen. And if you don't believe that, though if I fell dead here right now and rose back up and told you again, many would just be astonished with the miracle. Right? Instead of what God did for old Raymond when he saved his soul. Now, I'm going to give an invitation today. I want them to come play, sing whatever's on their heart. They do a fine job. Thank God for it. But you listen to me right now. They are lost people in this county and the counties around us in this state and around the world that needs us to support missions. They need us to support people that's preaching and teaching and try to help them get the word of God out to everyone. And I want you to understand something. He wants to use you to do it. But you got to be saved. This is not a, a, a club. This is not a, 
uh, um, put your name on everything and all this kind of stuff. That ain't what this is. This is the business of God. And he wants you a part of it. And may I submit to you, Jesus said, don't, don't rejoice. Rejoice rather in that your name is written in heaven. Your name can be written in the tables of heaven. And I can't think of any better place to write your name. Amen. But you have to come by the blood of Jesus. Now as they come and they play, I don't know if it, yeah, he's there. He's going to play or, or whatever we're going to do. But I want you to consider with me that this is a real place and heaven's a real place. There ain't but one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. If you're here and you're saved, you're backslidden, you need to come and just talk to God. If you need me, I'll pray with you. Because he ain't going to lose nothing he's found. Amen? But if you're lost, you need Jesus today. I stand our feet and humble our hearts. Father, I come to you right now. If I've said anything contrary to your word, please forgive me. But magnify the word, your word, in the hearts of the people. Help them to come today and pray for the lost. Help them to come and pray for the missionaries. Pray for me. Pray for the church. Pray for themselves. But Lord, if anybody be lost, help them to come and receive you and follow up with believers' baptism. And Lord, this altar is open for whosoever. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Won't you come? Won't you come? Pray, pray for your brothers and sisters. We got. Needs our prayer down here. Come down and pray with this young and with me, please. Or two of you, however many wants to come. Church, if I could get around here and hug everybody's neck, I would. I just want you to know I love you. This, this young and got saved here. I think she was about eight or nine. She she has a hard time. We need to pray for her. I'd like for everybody to bow their head. I'd like for everybody here that believes. Pray for Amber. Just lift her and her little family up and pray for her right now, please. Write her name down on your prayer list and you pray for her every day. Pray for her family. If you're here, every eye shut, please. If you're here and you've never asked Jesus to save you, you slip that hand up, I will not come and embarrass you. Just slip it up right quick. I'll pray for you. Anybody here that don't know you, know him. If you're here and sometimes you just feel like you're just all alone, that you're saved, raise that hand up. Raise it up and I'll pray for you. I see them hands. I see them hands. I see those hands. If you're here and you just want this old preacher just to lift you up, raise that hand up to the Lord. Let's just pray for one another. How about that? Let's pray for marriages. Let's pray for people's backslidden. Let's lift them up to God and let's be there for them any way we can. Father, I come to you in this house that's called out for your name's sake. They was hands that went up all over the house. Nobody raised their hand that they was lost. That's, that's good, Lord. I'm thankful. But Father God, sometimes they feel alone. And they know better. I know better. I feel alone sometimes. But I'm not alone. I've got you. I've got my wife and my family. And I've got a church family that loves me. And I love them. Father, as Josh said in Sunday school, help us to work together. Help us to try our best to get our other loved ones saved. And, and get them repented. And wanting to follow you, Lord. And, and have a great desire to teach their children and their grandchildren and their neighbors. 
Father, we pray for Amber. I, I pray for her. I pray for her family. I just lift them up to you, God, and just ask you to help her. Help her at school. I know school, uh, not just her, but with a lot of others, they, they're teaching them wrong things. And, and Father God, I pray for them. I just lift them up to you, God, and ask you to touch them that we'd, we'd realize that the Bible's what we need. And Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving us. Keep everybody safe today. Thank you for the ladies coming down and praying with the Lambert there. Thank you for that. Thank you for the congregation praying for her. And Lord, let us pray for each other this whole week. Thank you for allowing us to be here. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen and amen. I love you, sweet folks. Hang right in there, okay?